Fishing the DMV is close to hitting our first major milestone on Patreon of 100 Patreon subscribers. We are only 38 Patreon subscribers away from hitting this first milestone. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a Jackhammer Chatterbait, you will receive 5% off every order you get from Jake's Bait and Tackle. You'll be entered to win weekly prize giveaways, tons of private content only for our Patreon supporters. You'll be able to vote on new topics, where the show goes, and so much more. We are only 38 Patreon subscribers away from hitting our first major milestone of 100 subscribers as we get closer and closer to our overall goal of starting a nonprofit to help stock our local waterways. If you feel like you can help support the show, I would greatly appreciate it. Check out the link down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And today we have a really good show, kind of like finishing off the year in style and really getting into what we can expect in 2024. And I thought to, to bring this episode together, I'd bring back Brian from the BassCast. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, man. Thank you so much for having me back on again. Had a great time the last time, man. We dove into a lot of great topics and uh, excited to do it again. So I just... I probably talk too much, but I love talking. So I inherited that trait. No, no, no such thing here. That's all it's about is good conversations. And yeah, we had a big one. And I thought after that conversation, you know, the industry was going to quiet down for the holidays and then so much stuff kind of, you know, major league fishing, what happened with Marty Stone. I think that stuff happened after we talked. And then of course, Hobie. And it's just like it, <clears throat> the, the drama never ends. <laughs> You know, I don't think, you know, you're talking about the Mario Stone thing. I don't think they ever really put out a press release regarding, you know, any of that, why he got, I mean, the only reason why I know is because I was at a tournament and he was there for the English Choice uh, Championship and he was there and we talked about that. And, you know, Marty is, you know, he was kind of one of those bigger than life people that a lot of people looked up to. And I mean, I don't want to do the, nat I keep, guys, I apologize for the NASCAR you know, analogy here. But I mean, it's like you got the guy sits on the end and then you had Marty Stone, which is one of the guys fished. You know, he's been so involved in major league fishing since its conception that all of a sudden have this guy gone. <clears throat> but I mean, you know, I guess like a lot of companies are trimming the fat and he was the probably one of the highest ones paid by major league fishing and he had to go. So to save money and hopefully uh, save the, the uh, sport itself. Yeah, it's funny where the industry will say everything's fine, but then their actions and their words are always the thing you got to look at. And you can definitely tell people are starting to tighten their belt around the industry. Um, that doesn't mean like gloom and doom, but people are probably going to be start feeling it here in, in 2024. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. It's, it's definitely going to get a lot tighter and you're going to have to be more diverse in, you know, how you're, you know, Jacob Fouts has now put out two dozen videos in the last couple of weeks. I mean, mm hmm. He didn't want to talk to anybody uh, six months ago, but now he wants to talk to everybody. And I, I remember that days when the, those days when I started the BassCast.com. And you know, can I shoot a video and get a sponsor? No, no, it doesn't work like that. And now, and that was, guys, we're talking like 10, 12 years ago. Now that's like, no, dude, you got to shoot months of videos. You got to shoot years of videos. I mean. My boy Bass Geek, I mean, we're talking about 70,000 plus subs. I mean, years of hard work is what it takes and not just a few videos. Yeah. And Even that, if you are a great fisherman, because there's, you know, there's plenty of them lined up waiting to take your place on the Bassmaster Elite Series. There is. And that's a that's a whole rabbit hole of is your brand more important than your views? And, and, what, and what I mean by that is if you have a kid that mm. probably is not in... Maybe he's not on the touring, he's a touring pro and he does have two or 3 million, uh, like Johnny B, um, right. you know, he's a really good YouTuber, has a ton of views, but then you get a guy that's just starting out a YouTube channel. Let's say Brandon Paul like when he first started, who has more value and just a hypothetical question, analytically, you'd say like, well, it's John B, but then you think from maybe a knowledge gap, maybe it's Polinick. And I think that's interesting where youtube and all these views are going to go is it just pump out content i don't care you know what your knowledge base is in that like the mm -hmm. whole TikTok model or is it more of substance i don't know <clears throat> it's crazy i i you know i got my 
I know we're going to dive into this a little bit later, but I, you know, each year I set apart goals that I want to do. And this year was more LinkedIn. I want to get my LinkedIn page set up. I want to get more involved on LinkedIn. I recommend you as a business owner or as a professional angler to have a LinkedIn account. And, uh, you know, I was talking to a guy and he said, man, you know, he was making like 70 to 80,000 on 50 podcast listeners an episode just because he knew how to promote. Mm -hmm. It, it the, the best. You don't have to have 100,000 people listening. It, you just have to be, do you, you know, put out a good message. It's not what you don't know. Don't sell, you know. promote. Oh, absolutely. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. And it's networking, like, you know, full stop. And I think that's where, and bringing value, uh, like just basically like what you said, um, don't just tell somebody that you're going to give them 10 billion views because what's the conversion rate? It, it's telling like, this is the value I can bring to your company. Um, and I think that's so important. And I, I think it is interesting now when you look at it, just I look at the YouTube place and you have so many people coming onto YouTube and they're just dumping a shit ton of content, but then I'm like, but is there any value in it? Right. And I think, I don't know, there's not a conversion number for that yet, but that's going to be the holy grail of like, how do you determine the true value that you're bringing to your sponsorships? I, you know, I would say this on the YouTube part, but what hours watched. Uh, yes. Preach it. Amen. Hours watched. <clears throat> because you know to monetize on YouTube, that's one of the things. You gotta have five hundred followers mm -hmm. and the hours watched. <clears throat> and that's it, really. I mean, you know, if somebody's watching part of your video and it's too long and they only get through half of it, I mean, you've lost people right there because we're in a world of shorts and you know that. I mean, Thomas, you know that extremely well. I mean, you know, we're in this world where we all have the brains of squirrels. And in my opinion, this is a hot take. I think shorts are going to die here soon because sponsors are going to have a hard time how you market a short. It's so hard yeah. to insert oh, yeah. an ad in a 10 second clip and you can bullshit for 10 seconds. If you can put together a 20 minute video, that's really good. And you can have a personality with your audience. Poof, that's gold. That's real gold. 100% true. Uh, you know, we brought up the Marty Stone and Major League Fish and thing, but uh, for some of you guys who didn't see this as well, you know, they're supposed to go down. Major League Fishing was cutting back to what, 50 in 2025. They've now bumped that up, I think, to about 65 different anglers now uh, because they got a lot of flack from it. And, you know, so still people going home, but I mean, not as many going home in 2025. So, there was, there's been a few changes and a lot of hush, hush. And, you know, I, was, I had a press conference with uh, Major League Fish and probably, good gosh, it's been at least four years ago now. And how they were going to be more open about a lot of things. And they're still the same old Major League Fish. The end. I, you could write <clears throat> a fantastic research paper on how not to do PR and HR through what Major League Fishing did. And it came back to, you know, the conception when they bought um, FLW and they really mm -hmm. didn't respect a lot of those accolades that those anglers received at the end of the year to be able to move on instead of saying like, yeah, listen, you guys, you, you won the Costa Championship or whatever. We're going to respect that. They were just like, eh, it is what it is. Sorry, we're just converting. And that pissed a lot of people off back then, too. And it's such it an is. easy thing to do. So easy. And the Farswood Cup. I mean, yep. a lot of people worked their ass off to get to that, and they canceled that as well. And, you know, <clears throat> as from what I heard and what I've been told is that's why we got the Tackle Warehouse Invotationals. And, you know, the, the whole big thing about that was people who had earned it and then come to find out there ended up being a lot of people invited that were just – I'm sorry, we'll let you come fish the Tackle Warehouse Invitationals. We're sorry we screwed up your life a long time ago. If you'd like to show up, please come fish the Invitationals with us. It And what's so funny is all of this is just a knee jerk to trying to be bass. And this is something I've talked about on the show a lot about, you know, understanding your brand and building a community and, and not trying to just, if you're trying to compete with, don't try to compete with McDonald's and make a Big Mac because you're not going to beat McDonald's Big Mac. Just do you and be your own brand. And Major League Fishing has had this weird complex where they have to become the next bass. <laughs> but if you look at the MPFL, they're like, we're just going to shut up. We're going to do our own thing. And they're pretty successful. Yeah. 
you know, even after the shakeup, after, you know, like the first season or so, second season, I think is what it was, you know, they're, like you said, man, just quiet. They run a great league, great series. I think it's like, I've, like I told you guys in the past, I've had them on the show, Bass Case Radio, and it ain't about like five to 10 people that run the whole freaking company. I mean, that's media, photographers, video, you name it, that run this whole entire thing. And I mean, they do a great job. <clears throat> and now, not now, but last year, you know, they went to the $100,000 payout. Mm -hmm. So the anglers are loving it. And as you guys see, Patrick Walters put a, he, he paid for his house with the major league, with national professional fishing league. What is this weird sense in the, or in, in all of fishing where you have to compete with bass? And, and now you're seeing this with Hobie, basically their retort by saying you can use electric motors is right. to try to compete with the bass series. There's this weird thing where it's like, you have to try to fight bass at some reason. Whereas the MPFL strategy was like, we're just going to do our, we're going to build a product. And if you like it, you're going to come enjoy it, but we're not going to try to vocally or whatever say we're gonna fight them and i it's so weird that more people haven't taken that route yeah you, you don't see those uh press releases and the crazy shenanigans yeah. over at the npfl like you see at major league fishing i mean you really don't i mean it's like you said it's just a quiet thing and then diving into the hobie thing like you're talking about <clears throat> i was i watched the video you guys all did i mean hopefully for you guys who are in the kayak world you know Chad Hoover, Hobie, and Bass had a meeting, and it, and it was talking about rules and talking about season and talk, you know, trying to get everybody on the same playing field. And I don't, I don't know if it's because of this meeting, guys. This meeting was earlier in this year, by the way, because you know we ourselves through our tournament series that we had were looking, you know, which direction should we go. <clears throat> and uh, this year we went bass. I mean, we we went bass ourselves. And in 2023 and 2024 and beyond, uh, we are now the uh, Bass Nation of Virginia Kayak Series Championship um, host. And uh, we're going to host the tournament that's going to send uh, a percentage of anglers. I think she said it's 10. I think it's what she said. Danielle huh? said uh, to uh, the Bassmaster Classic from Virginia. That's fantastic. So we're hosting that. We did it this year. We're going to be doing it again next year. So we're really excited about that as well. So, but yeah, you, you kind of wonder when Hobie did what they did. And uh, we mean, you were talking off before the show about Torquedo. And you wonder if the business now we're all starting to merge. You know what I'm saying? Heck, for all we know, there could be a press release in the next week. Hobie buys Torquedo. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't know a lot about it. It's just been something that they've decided to do, but there's a reason why that they've decided to do it. And it's usually got a dollar behind it. Sorry, not sorry. It's no other way to say it. I mean, it's, you know, the bass cast, we do it too. I mean, we pay the bills. Yeah. But to me, what's so perplexing about this, I think you're right. Maybe more information would come out like they did by Torquedo. Um, <sighs> You're a kayak brand first and not a tournament brand first. And this is right. something that I keep coming back to. I'm, if you were Chick-fil-A and you're like, I just sell chicken. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? To compete with the burger joints, we're going to sell burgers. Yeah, you might make more money, but doesn't that screw up everything you have for maybe short-term financial gain? And I, I don't understand where they're, if they're afraid of bass, you have a diverse company. Raise the amount that individuals can win. And all of a sudden, people are going to come fish your organization if you want to do it that way. It's just perplexing since you're a pedal drive system and you're unique. Oh, yeah. People like that you are unique. And it's just this weird thing that we all want to be the same thing. And if everything's the same, you're not different. You're going to lose out eventually. Yeah, I, I like what you said about the, you know, the Chick-fil-A and, you know, so, you know, they always talk about making chicken better. And that's what needs to happen right here. You need to make your tournament series better. And, yeah. it, you know, you, you don't need to add extra parts and pieces. And because what's going to happen now is I'm going to have to feel obligated because if I don't have a motor, I can't win. If, if I don't have X amount of money to spend on this, and that's <clears throat> guys, that's why the whole kayak series thing was kind of created to begin with mm -hmm. was because we saw this. We saw bass boats. 
And uh, I had someone on the show a week ago, and he was talking about his very first bass boat was like $12,000. I mean, a brand new boat. <clears throat> and, you know, we spend that much on some of these kayaks now with all the gear, yeah. you know, the 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 motor, because that's like $4,000 in Torquito. Torque, 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 and then you buy a nice kayak on top of that, there's $2,000. So we're $6,000, then you get gear. Uh, then if you go to Yak Attack, that stuff ain't cheap either. It's great stuff. I ain't going to say it's some of the best stuff you could buy. But, I mean, before you know it, you know, you brought it up about uh, another big-time kayak angler. We all know who this person is, but having $20,000 in a kayak, I mean, it's it's gotten to a point now where we're doing the same thing the boats are doing. Yeah, and if you're a Hobie, I've seen the comment sections where people are like, well, I was thinking of getting a Hobie, but because you can allow Torquitos, I'm just going to go buy a cheaper kayak that doesn't have a pedal drive system and then just go get a Torquito. Yep. So how many customers are you turning away from a pedal drive Hobie? It, it, it's just, I don't know. It, it, sometimes companies do make dumb decisions. I mean, Bud Light, Coors Light, they made some banger decisions this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, I don't know. I'm just fascinated to see that one perplexed me a lot. MLF. I, I, I can't agree with a lot of their stuff, but the Hobie is like, I really like to see your long-term strategy here with that. I really would. Cause like, you know, Justin Largan, one of our writers, uh, he wrote a story about the, the whole shenanigan and, uh, you know, you know, he's got two kayaks and that's what he carries with him to cover both series, you know, a Hobie. And I'm not sure what the other one he fishes out of, to be honest, I think a lot to you guys, but, uh, you know, like you said, why do I need the Hobie anymore? Unless they make it where it's you got to have a Hobie. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, like I said earlier, you know, we might hear after the first year of, of an acquisition that they bought out Torquedo and, you know, joined forces there and moved on. I mean, because <clears throat> I know we're going to talk business later, but things are going to start merging in 2024. Yeah. That would be some 3D chess, though, honestly. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. They bought out Torquedo. It would make all the sense in the world if that happened. So we shall see. It's going to be an interesting year. What are you planning? I mean, was that What was the biggest shocker for you this year, I guess? And then we can move on into what you're looking into next year for. Wow. The biggest shocker. Probably some of these, you know, from the Bassmaster side is probably a lot of the retirements. I mean, anglers that had just come back to bass, anglers that have been there for a little while and retiring. But, you know, the the big number of people that left the uh, Elite Series as a whole and to move on, I mean, and, <clears throat> you know, I brought it up in a story I, write, I put up on the website. You know, the, the electronics is forward-facing sonar, at, you know, other older anglers leaving because of forward-facing sonar. <clears throat> because they don't want to learn it. I mean, you know, they didn't grow up with all this crazy computer stuff that we had. And I brought it up on a show the uh, show that I did the other day. I had one of the original electronics here at this house, which was a chart and a piece of paper, guys. If you really want to go back that far, I mean, you know, and they read the graph. I mean, it you know, it was just bouncing signals off the bottom of the water. The not off not off the water, but off, you know, the bottom of the, you know, the ground under the water. <clears throat> but I mean, you know, is that making all the anglers retire? That was one of the major things. Um, and just, I guess, like you said, you know, majorly fishing. <clears throat> I mean, after, after all the, com after all that dropped, I mean, the website just started blowing up and the Keith Poche stuff. I mean, that was oh, the right. Yeah. I mean, Keith Poche and a lot of the stuff there happening. I mean, holy cow. I mean, he had, what, three incidents this year? He, you know, he couldn't fish one of the major, you know, one of the Bassmaster Elite events. One of them he couldn't fish. We all know why. It's because, you know, he had a, a major league fishing event before that event. So the boundaries, he, he overstepped those, which we understand at the off-limit boundaries. But, you know, it's just some of the stuff that happened there was, I mean, it's a crazy year. I mean, it really was. That, that's probably our top three right there from twenty. 23 that went down it made it like can we can we can we calm down a little bit please i mean it's been a heck of a season already but yeah yeah shoot i completely thought i forgot about the poche stuff that that happened this year yeah For some reason i thought it was like a, a year no ago. this year 
and the amount of people complaining online that like you know he should just buy a big old fiberglass boat or whatever and and not use that one and that was a whole can of worms um that was mm-hmm. kicked open with that yep uh, oh my goodness yeah i mean if i had to pick one for me i think the first one would be you know getting back to the area that i really cover is is understanding like the alabama bass situation and how devastating that is to our local environment if that doesn't get taken care of um if you look at you know bugs island kerr lake uh the james river and and what it will do and people will introduce fish and not think about that stuff and the the biologists aren't too worried about the largemouth but it's that you could basically eradicate smallmouth from virginia and like they will no longer exist because they interbreed with smallmouth and turn them into mules and they just will disappear and I don't know. Like, I didn't know that that whole fight was going on until I started to talk to the biologists and then to realize like Kerr, like really needs some, some love, some TLC or something to get yeah. it back. Ah, uh, that, that bass tournament there, that, that, uh, bass open. I was, I, I really wanted the weights to be better than it was just to root for our home waters, but dang. <clears throat> As you guys know, I had a uh, Rick Morris on the other night and, uh, you know, we, we talked about the spotted bass that, you know, have started to take over Kerr Lake. I mean, you know, it's it's just been, you know, I get his point on it on one side because, you know, if you go other locations that have the spotted bass, you know, they get four or five pounds. But I don't think we have the food and the vegetation here in our lakes to get them to that size that, you know, that they're hoping they want to get to. And I don't think we ever will. And it's they just become a nuisance where – you're catching two pound fish. I mean, all day long. I mean, and yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, and, you know, we, we had, um, we had uh, a couple of biologists on Odenkirk who, who ran the, one of the task force for this. And he said, like, it's like, if you go online, you see in California, they have, you know, 20 pound large mouth. And you're like, well, I'll just stock it. And automatically I'll have that. And it's like the situations where you have good spotted bass, right? Everything is so perfect. Yeah. And they don't talk about in the news all the lakes that they don't have those conditions and you have a bunch of one pound fish and, and that could be a lot of issue for guys they only see hartwell they only see lanier and it's like we will make that happen and you, you guys know i mean smith mountain lake ever since i've started this thing what do we do we kill the grass that was the thing to me that is so i've been really trying with this show to promote is is educating homeowners on SAV and how important it is. And you see people in the comment sections of different like yeah. forms, like they're taking a weed eater to, to their bank and cutting down all the, the water willow, things like that. Not understanding the importance of SAV and how it, if you want a Gunnersville, if you want some of these lakes down South, you need vegetation. If you had yep. milfoil or hydrilla in Smith mountain Lake, <sighs> holy Christ, the yeah. weights would be insane. It'd be insane. And the big boys that want to come back up here just to fish it. I mean, I know, I know there's money involved in that because the counties, but yeah, that would be, I mean, it would, it would put us back on the map and probably bump us up a whole lot higher. I mean, I know every year we're like in the 50th, like 50 lakes in Virginia bass, put. I mean, not 50 lakes in the United States, the bass puts on their website. And usually we're like midway down. I mean, yeah, usually yeah, about I, 40th or something. I mean, it's sometimes we've gotten up there, but. If we had if we had it pop off, I think it would force them to come back if the lake was too good. I think it would force them to come back. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and then just really besides that, I guess the other success story, I'll, I'll go locally then before I, I go nationally, is uh, you know, the, the smallmouth hatchery that the that Virginia is doing now, that they're raising smallmouth to help combat things, to That's try awesome. to have the new river, the Shenandoah, you know, the upper Potomac, these places become like the Susquehanna, which mm. if you're a if you're a kayak guy. That's a kayak tournament trail right there. If you got all those popping like the Susky. So right. that's pretty cool that they're trying to do that as well. Um, I, I'm a big proprietor that if you're going to have more fishermen, we have to start supplementally stocking more to keep these fisheries good. This is something I wish Bass, MLF, all these people would do. If they're going to go to Hartwell 10,000 times, why are you not helping to make sure Hartwell stays good? Just saying. Uh, <clears throat> well... I think that goes back to the counties and the states and the cities and how they spend their money on uh, what their biggest uh, attraction is for their state. And a lot of that money comes from there because, you know, they have to pay bass and them to show up. I mean, it's it's, it's fifty to hundred thousand dollars and thirty thousand, I think, for the opens. Yeah. So I think it's what is it payout now? Bass a hundred, isn't it? 
No, it's fifty. Is it for it, what, for the opens or the hundred thousand in it. For the elites or yeah, the opens? The elites. Elites, it's a hundred. <clears throat> so your county has to put all that money up. <clears throat> That's the thing that has to change at some point, I feel yeah. like, because it's a it can be a corrupted system where I know you guys at the Sabine really love when bass comes. However, a lot of times that fishing is terrible to watch. So it is. but they pay. And it's right. like Beaver. Do you remember Beaver Lake when FLW went there habitually? It, it's it's okay when you go to the St. Lawrence because you're catching like two hundred pounds of smallmouth. So right. if you go over oh, here, yeah, that's yeah, one yeah. thing. But if a county is going to pay and it's going to be six, like what if what if Pittsburgh paid them to come every year? People would hate that. So it's I don't like know. A, it's like a, I went to, I think I went to the last Farswood Cup they had and it was like on a river. And uh, two pounds, I mean, we're talking about like an eight pound limit for the day. I mean, it's so embarrassing. I, I didn't even know what to take photos of. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, I know that, that that town paid the money and that's the reason why it happened. But it would be cool if we could figure out a way that bass could visit other locations without having that price tag. But that's between bass and the locations. Because there's a lot of lakes and a lot of places, you know, that they could go to. But, you know, there's not a big enough chamber of commerce that wants to pay the $100,000 price tag. Yeah, because it's, I mean, and there's there's two parts to it. Like, the first part is like, that's what's weird about their top lakes list, where it's like, the top lake will just say a Smith Mountain Lake in the country, but we're never going to go there. You know, and the clear lake, I get the whole California thing, but it's weird when you, you're creating a list of the top lakes, but a good portion of those top lakes you're never going to go to as a, as an organization. That's a little yeah. weird. Like, I don't know. Um, yeah, that, that's just, that's, that's really weird to me. Um, and the other thing really about this year, I think we can safely say that this year was the year of the glide bait. Like, Oh yeah. My God. If, that's like, bit, if I had money to put into this glide bait stock last winter, I would retire. It blew up. Oh, yeah. I yep. mean, great year. I mean, no, that and uh, swim baits, man. You know, the big old fat swim baits coming out as well. I mean, you know, you know, it's every year there's a different bait that kind of takes the, you know, you know, we had the Alabama rig one year. I mean, it's it's like every year there's a bait that takes center stage and the glide bait was it, so. But there's a, mo I, I think this is what makes it work is there's a moment. So I think, some, I think something no one's talking about is like BFS fishing because it hasn't had that moment in the spotlight. When a guy named Milliken won an mm -hmm. event on the glide bait, I feel like there's a before and after. After that event, I just feel like everyone went into their garage and figured out how to make one. <laughs> it, it blew up that stock price when it came to glide baits just from that tournament and his following and just all that combining there um Milton i don't know i just no holes barred guys i actually started watching some of his videos while i've been off and that's like he's a wild dude did i didn't know i i i dabbled in some of his videos it's interesting that i guess for his boat wrap he's gonna have everyone that like donates will get their name or picture put on his boat wrap yeah. chat let me know if that's correct but that's wow that's pretty cool. A lot, you know, Fouts is doing the same thing. Jacob said, threw that out there a week ago, and he's going to do the same thing. And then I talked to someone else, and they do the same thing every year. They take a certain part of their boat, and for everybody who donates, they put something. You know, I don't know. I can't remember what they put on each one of their boats. You said the photos, but <clears throat> however, you got to pay for it. I guess that's how they do it. So, yeah. yeah. You got to do what you got to do to pay for the wrap. Um, yep. And then I, and I guess. Dollars. The the last drama thing uh, from this year that I thought was was spicy, just being at ICAST, was uh, Berkeley and their swim baits. And um, what the hell happened to that company? My goodness. I mean, it, it's interesting, the uh, the drama they're always caught up in every year. Yeah, that one right there was like, that was a shocker to me because someone brought it up to me and I was like, because I hadn't been really paying that much attention to that part of it at the time. And I was like, you know, you kind of wonder a company has been around for as long as they've been around. And then to have issues, I mean, it's crazy. When was the last time they made something truly inventive? Ooh. Because I don't remember the last time they, they hit it out of the park. You know, they always talk about the science of fishing. You guys see the commercials all the time and you wonder what 
<clears throat> uh, that probably, you know, what was it? They they introduced some scent or something like that a while back, or it was some type of, but it wasn't really it was no baits. Max scent, I think. Yeah, the max scent. That's it, it, right there. Yeah, and that's been how long, dude? Like, come on, ten years? Yeah, t- like I think it's I think it's been that long because that's <laughs> when when this stuff really hit, and Buka was saying some things about you know the, the swim bait, and I looked at like the past couple of big baits they've released over the years. It's like they're just taking somebody else's like concept and they're adjusting it, but it's not like, and, and that's fine guys. Like, you know, like when, when the chatterbait came out, you knew people were going to copy it. That's no big deal, but yeah, they, they haven't hit it with their own cool thing yet. I mean, you know, hummingbird came out with side scan first, like things like that. Like, and it's just weird. It feels like they're kind of resting on their morals and it kind of, it kind of just became this pinnacle with this swim bait controversy. Yeah. Actually talking about the hummingbird, man, I was sitting in a video I actually, when I went to iCast, it's been a while, guys. I ain't gonna lie to you, but I went to iCast, and it was right at the time that was coming out. And I actually sat in a video, and they talked about the whole thing and breaking technology. But that's been it. I mean, it really hasn't been anything worth writing home about from either one. I mean, and you haven't heard them change anything, do anything, or improve anything. It's like <clears throat> we're Berkeley. You're going to see the same thing. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say crap. Same crap on the shelves at every freaking tackle store you go in. And, you know, I don't want to say bad, but it's almost like going to Walmart. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not bad. It's just meh. I mean, it's like, could you please throw half that shit away? Yeah. I mean, really, you know, get rid of it and bring in some other smaller bait and tackle companies that are really innovating and making changes you know biz baits is one of them that's good uh, yeah. i'm working with uh louis uh who is it louis lures uh they got some great stuff and it's a lot of small brands like that that <clears throat> louis does the injected injected color baits and uh you know th- they came out with their own cool bait for us but uh, i mean you know there's a lot of different brands out there that have come out with some great stuff in the last Shit, ten years. Mm-hmm. That have been small awesome. companies, smallerish companies. Yeah, um, compared to the big dogs. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, that, that that to me was was kind of flooring, and it, and it is it's the staleness of it all, and really going into I guess twenty twenty four. I don't know what to expect bait wise, like what the next bait will be. I, I think the next boom is. I had an I had an electrician on. I don't know. It's a blur. I talked to too many people, but um, he talked about you know, boat wiring. And I asked him like, so what do you think the next big thing is? He's like, with how many graphs and screens and stuff, it's batteries, it's battery chargers. It's, you know, you almost need a Tesla in the back of your boat. If you're running seven graphs and how many pan optics hubs and stuff like that. So I wonder what's going to happen next year with that. I will say 2023 was the year of the battery. And twenty, probably twenty two and twenty three were the big years. You saw so many new battery companies come out. Uh, you know, I ain't gonna lie, guys. I got Battleborn batteries sitting right here at the house. I mean, great company. And it was the year of the battery because everybody wanted to be lighter and faster, and it lasted longer. And you know, you only had to charge it a couple times during a tournament, maybe none. I mean, if you were just fishing a two day tournament, you probably wouldn't have to charge the battery at all. And like you said, the wire, I could see a wiring harness or something like that because, <clears throat> you know, with the boat prices going up, it's going to be a lot of home, you know, DIY guys doing their own work to save $65, $70 an hour at a boat dealership to have this stuff done. And if you came out with a really cool harness or a mechanism to hook all this stuff up off of one, two, the, the question is, you know, we got a three bank charger now, Thomas. Where, what are we going to go to next? Uh, let's see. Hummingbird came out with a five last year. I think they're going to go to six and seven. Like they, they, with the amount of draw that these stuff, and you've seen the pictures online and the memes yes. of, of guys with insane amount of graphs. That's a lot of juice. And, and that to me is, again, I, I know I caught flack for this in my video about talking about the boat prices and stuff. But if you buy a brand new boat, that's just nothing on it how much more are you going to spend with the accessories that, that you probably need to be competitive, right? So mm-hmm. $2,000, $3,000 in just batteries, then everything else. I mean, it, it's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. 
It's definitely insane. And, you know, I, you know, I, I think the industry, to be honest, really, it, it's now time for a boat innovator to come out with a great boat, great storage uh, at a reasonable price. It really is. It's time for someone to come out with that, that and, you know, and go the McDonald's way, guys. Mm -hmm. Sell millions of burgers instead of five. Yeah. And it really is that time for that to happen because, I mean, if they came out with a good product, storage is king because that's what usually gets cut first when, you know, you, when you go down to the angles, none of the boats are cheaper, guys. When you go down to the thirty thirty five thousand $35,000 boats, storage is usually cut first because they cut down on size a little bit. So, I mean, if you could come out with a, a everyday angler boat for fifty to sixty thousand dollars, dude, I mean, it would like destroy the market. Yeah, it would. And I think that's where I think <clears throat> that's going to be getting there. I think the used market is going to get hot again with with just different things. I saw. Um, I'm going to butcher the name. I think it, it, Hensel or Hershey, the the big uh, boat. Uh, I guess boat wires down in, in Tennessee, you know, they started offering like refurbishing packages for old boats, carpeting, metal work, things like that. And I'm like, that is cool. That's smart. That is that's, smart. That's yes. You know that not everyone's going to go buy a new boat every year and they're gonna have to refurbish. Um, if an, if, if, if an organization allowed that, I would be, I would be interested about that. Like if NPF or what any organization like, listen, you don't have to buy a brand new boat. You can run you're 2008. If that's what you have, and mm -hmm. you're allowed in the organization. Something like that. What? What? How much money would they actually lose from boat sponsors? Because you're just going to help out the common man. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I guess that's. I like that idea, though, man. It's like you know, back in the day, I had an old car and looking at old car magazines, and you could buy the whole kit to refurbish it, and you know, the carpet and the seats, and you know, all that great stuff. And for someone doing that, I mean, my old neighbor back in the day when I was younger. Uh, he went to work for his uncle in California, and that's what they did out there is they refurbished like Mercedes and Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff. And that's that's a heck of an idea because, I mean, it, as long as you keep the boat, the motor's the key. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you guys know, you look, you know, if you've ever bought a boat, you look, the, you, the boat's on one part of the book and the motor's on the other part of the book. I mean, you look up the motor and you look up the boat, put them together and you get the price. I mean, that's how it, that's how it works. So, I mean, the motor is the key. So, I mean, if you keep your boat clean and washed out, I mean, heck, I think it lasts forever. And your and personal property kept. tax. Yeah. And your personal property tax would be way lower if it's not a 2024 model. Yeah. Which in Virginia, <laughs> that will help you out a lot. Yes. What are you looking forward to most in 2024 or, or, or what do you have coming up with all that? And we can talk about the industry and also just, just with your company. Um, <clears throat> 2024, man, you know, we're getting back into, um, as you guys know, we eliminated the kayak series this year. Uh, we dropped the press release, uh, about a week ago to, yeah, about a week ago, but, uh, you know, the Bass Cast tournament series to be back. Um, I bought a, uh, I upgraded my forerunner and bought me a rooftop tent. Oh, cool. So, yeah, so I made a big investment in that, and we're um, putting some kits together for that to travel more, and uh, we're looking to do more bigger events next year. <clears throat> we're looking at covering some opens and uh, more of the Big Bass Tournament Series because that doesn't get a whole lot of news, and it, mm -hmm. the guys love that, and they love you know being there and getting to, you know when we talk to them and all the stuff that the Bass Cast does. And it actually works out pretty good for us because the Big Bass Tour is only coming one time at Smith Mountain Lake this year. Hmm. So in the fall or whatever the schedule looks better, we're, we haven't looked at the schedule 100% and started marking it all out. But, you know, that's we're looking at covering bigger events. And, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know if I brought this up, you know, on the last one or not, but the, we're, we're, at a, we're at a plane now. We really are in the tournament world. We're at a plane where... We're not, we don't have the spikes that we used to ever, you know, we don't have a 200 boat series anymore in Virginia. There's not, I mean, there's no 200 boat except for a championship. Yes, we do. Uh, cat has a 200 boat, you know, roughly 200 for that, but we're all at 50 to a hundred boats, a tournament. So there's, 
I don't want to say there's no need to cover the small tournaments, but we still will. We'll still do all the cats, we'll still do all the English choice. But now for us to get those next numbers as the site grows, we need to cover a bit larger events. And that's going to be the opens and that's going to be the big bass tour brings 500 to an 800 anglers to a lake <clears throat> to help us expand the brand, the basscast.com. So, I mean, that's, that's what we're really looking at in 2024 is to expand camping, traveling, hanging out, hanging out with the anglers, trying to find out where they're camping. Cause a lot of anglers do camp and uh, I love camping and I'm getting to move out of the back of the forerunner to the top of the forerunner. <laughs> That would be interesting to see how that works, like aerodynamic and just having that big old thing. How much does that weigh on top of there? 260 pounds. Dang, man. Yes. It's a lot lighter than I thought, actually. Huh. Yes. Yeah, so it's uh so it's it's everything is here. Uh we're just kind of waiting. We'll probably put it on after we uh come back from uh probably spring, but maybe a little earlier based on Virginia. We all know we always get some crazy weather here. But uh after we come back from probably after we come back from um north Tennessee from Knoxville. And we'll go to the Knoxville Expo. But uh, yeah, you know, right now, uh, on top of that, we're looking at Expo season. I mean, that's the I love Expo time. Um, you know, we're going down to North Carolina to Charlotte for that. Uh, the first one and then Richmond, which we'll get to see each other and hang out. And then uh, we're going to Knoxville and it's three great expos in a row, uh, catching up with people and uh, seeing our sponsors. And uh, hopefully some new sponsors. And that's, that's what it's all about. And getting this, it's crazy getting to see people that follow the bass cast. And uh, that world's, I have to tell a quick story. And this is funny. And I got laughed at a lot. But um, I went to a family re family Christmas family get together, Thomas. Oh, cool. <clears throat> and I was down in Martinsville, Virginia. And I was wait, you know, hour and a half from the house. And I was walking through a Hibbit Sports. And a guy pointing me out and he's like you're brian with the basscast.com and next thing we started talking and took a photo of each other and posted on social media because i always love doing that and you know thanking everybody that follows us i mean because it's very important to us i mean they're family so it was just really weird to be picked out like that especially for something i started like 12 years ago posting flyers on cars and you know being crazy and stuff but still crazy but that's what's it's surreal about it's it's super freaking surreal i went to um the the lake anna veterans day tournament which is like the the largest tournament that's put on lake anna mm -hmm. and i was actually fishing with uh matt strikel of sb fishing and i had a line of people wanting to talk to me that was bigger if not the same size as, as matt's and it it was the first time i actually been out fishing and not locked in my prison just shooting podcast episodes and it's weird when people are like oh they know you because and, and guys, if you look at analytics as much as we do, it's it, it becomes statistics and they're not people sometimes. And then you realize like, oh, shit, people do listen or, or watch or, or read. It's not yeah. just numbers on a screen. It, it's such a I don't know how to explain it. It's it's surreal, though. Yeah, I mean, we really appreciate everyone that listens and everyone watches and checks it out. And, you know, the kind words. I mean, I, I got a guy messaged me the other day, a lot of Merry Christmases and stuff. And. I hate to say it. I had to fall on a sword for a couple of them because sometimes I don't have their numbers. I mean, I in my phone. So, I mean, but yeah, we really appreciate all the follows and all the love and for everything we both do. I mean, from the podcast world and I, I love doing them. I mean, I shit, I do. We're going to be doing more of uh before the first cast. I mean, it's our, you know, we talked about it on the last show. Uh, it's our 15 minute podcast show. And uh, we're going to we're going to up it to at least two shows a month right now. And maybe more later. So, I mean, we I, 15 minutes is cool. A lot of people like the 15 minutes. And it's just a quick, how you doing? Give us the information. Here's the meat. We get off. We're a done. Nice little appetizer. Yeah, that's it. So that's that's where the, you know, that's where we're heading in 2024. Um, we're looking at bringing on more people. Uh, content's king. And uh, we're looking yeah, at bringing nice. on some more people uh, on top of what we already have. So, I mean, it's one of those things where I, I can't, I can't do all of it. I wish I could. I mean, you know, but until I'm free, it kind of takes a few extra people to help out around here. And we appreciate the ones that already do help. So 
it's a good problem to have. And on top of it, you said you're traveling more. I mean, if you had to guess, how many miles do you think you're going to be you're going to be putting on on the old vehicle this year coming up? Good God. Uh, l- let's just start here. If anybody's listening, I could use a vehicle sponsor. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you got to be able to hold a rooftop tent and uh, you can wrap it however you want to wrap it as long as the basket is on at one spot. But uh, holy cow, I wish I it's got to be thousands of miles. I mean, it really does. I bet you, you know, I travel more. I ain't going to say further, but I probably travel almost as much as an elite angler. Almost, but not as far. You know, they go to many, many states. But I mean, gone every freaking weekend or stuff for a holiday that me and Danielle are on the road or I by myself are on the road. So, I mean, because you guys love what we do and we love doing it. When, when you said earlier that you want to cover some of the opens, uh, is there a particular one? You're going to try to stay within a, a hundred mile radius, yeah. a 200. Like what, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. We're probably just going to hit the ones in South Carolina this year. There's, I think if I remember correctly, there are two opens in South Carolina and uh, we're going to head down there and hit both of those. I was thinking about going to Florida, but I could travel that far right off the beginning of the year. It kind of interferes with some events we have going on locally. So, I want to hit those opens. Uh, we're going to do the Big Bass Tour here on Smith Mount Lake. Uh, I think there's a Big Bass Tour event. I think it ended up one down on Lake Norman or something like that. There's a Big Bass Tour event yes. down there. I don't know when, though. So we're looking at probably hitting that one. I've talked to some people about the one in Tennessee. I heard it's not huge, but maybe That's the weird. one in, hmm. there's one in Tennessee as well. But, you know, I, I thought about that. You know, Thomas, I, I you know, we brought this up earlier, and this is a mistake that I made. I'll be honest with you guys. I started getting mo- into more states, and it was a mistake, and I deleted it because I really haven't reached the states that I wanted to reach, <clears throat> which was Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and that's the three states that I want to concentrate in. There's another website that's down further, but uh, I, you know, that's where I want to put my market and I said, well, and it, I just threw Tennessee in there one time and thought it, I could make it happen and it just didn't work. And something you you live and learn. So in Tennessee's weird, because I could definitely see that that one portion of Tennessee up near Virginia would work, but then it's like what it's really, you're just saying like which lakes you would cover versus the state, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, because Kerr is that way too. Kerr is weird. Cause like Kerr is, as much of Virginia Lake as it is a North Carolina Lake, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. So mm-hmm. yeah, th- there's, you have to cover that, but yeah, Tennessee that's cause yeah, yeah, that, that, that is interesting. Huh? Yeah. You guys know geek and you know, from the show and South Holston and all that way, he always talks about it a lot being dinner where he covers and yeah, that part of the, yeah, that's about as far as I really want to go. Cause then from there we're looking eight, nine, 10 hours. It's insane. It's, it, it's yeah. What is you that? Know, like I, it's up there. It's like on the border of Tennessee and uh, crap. What is it? Is that Kentucky? Uh, I know what you're talking about. Is it Cumberland? That's not Cumberland. No, it ain't Cumberland. But they had a uh, they had a Bassmaster Elite event there a couple years ago when they were doing that. And I think they're still doing that where they do. They actually do a catch and release tournament. It's like a three day event. Some crazy. It's called Bass Fan. Bassmaster did a couple years ago, and I looked it up and it was like it's eight and a half hours away, and I think I'm just gonna stay here. Because, you know, you think Tennessee, it's not a big place, but it's long. Cherokee? Might have been. I know it bordered two states. Hmm. I'd have to look it up. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that later. But, I mean, yeah. but it was when, you know, it's like the first or second year they did the bat, that bass fan thing they did where they did the whole outdoor experience. And um, right. I think with uh, last year they or this year they went to, te- did they go to Texas? Or last year they went to Texas. Last year they went to Texas. Yeah, last year they went to Texas for the Bass fan. So, I mean, it's a cool thing. I mean, you know, something different halfway through the middle of the season. And that's something that you would be the best guy to talk about this, where I think the last time I checked this, the last data points I found was from 2022 about fishing licenses sold in Virginia. And I think it was between 400 and 500,000, something like that. But then I started to think, looking at my analytics and whatever, and you see who actually fishes tournaments, the diehards. Mm-hmm. Out of those fishing licenses in each state, how much, what percentage of that are the ones that tune into everything you think? Do you think like 1%, 10%? Oh, yeah. There's still people that don't know who I am. 
That's crazy. I mean, it really is crazy. I mean, I've been doing this thing for a decade, but some people, you know, they're caught up in a moment, <clears throat> whatever that moment is, and just don't think about it. I mean, you know, or they think I work for that organization. But yeah, you know, it's crazy that there's people that still don't know a decade later who the BassCast.com is, even with the following that we have. And our following's, you know, I was looking at Google, the analytics uh, today in Texas, huge for us, North yeah. Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia. That's surprising for me too. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. I mean, you know, but I have a few people out in California. I've got a, actually our last two contest winners that we gave away, uh, we gave away some jigs before the holiday and our winners were in California. So we got a big, you know, a great following out there in California as well. So it's just it's just weird how spread out it really is. And, you know, I don't know how you I don't even know what you sum it up to, to be honest. I mean, how. So many people will find you and what you think is your bread and butter. It still is Virginia. You know, that's still our main spot. But it's crazy how you think other states haven't really heard about us at all either. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. What you, you wonder what you could do. Yeah, you really do. And you wonder if it's like, is it the same 100, 150 people that fish all the tournaments? Are they different? How much crossover is it? Is it all a different 100 in each tournament? Like, what is the 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 vocal group? And it's usually, as they say, is the vocal minority, but the ones that talk the most of stuff, you know, what that group size is between states. And I don't know, ever since I do did this, that's fascinating to me um, to, to kind of figure that out here. Um, I would say there are three groups here. There really are. There's the Die Hard Bass Nation, and they are Die Hard. I mean, they will preach Bass Nation until they fall down into the grave. Uh, there are uh, the second group are I fish my home lake. You know, I only fish my home lake. I agree with that. You know, I, I know I can cash a check on my home lake. They're, they're check cashers. You know, I, I kind of say that, you know, going out there and taking kids money. I mean, you know, because they spend all their time on that lake and they kind of set up their schedule at the beginning of the year for that lake. I mean, <clears throat> the guys who won five alive championship that I covered like a couple of months ago said the whole reason why they fished the series was because it was back at that lake. It was Lake Gaston. It was back at Lake Gaston. So, I mean, that was there's those. And then there are just, I would kind of call them more of your weekend anglers or, you know, they like being a part. And I actually wrote something about that today. It's up on the basscast.com about being a part of a organization or a club. They like knowing who they're going to compete against. They like knowing who they're going to see at each and every event. Yeah. You no, know, it's church league softball type of deal. What's that? Like church league softball type of deal. That's it. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they, and it's, and if you go read that story, that's what it kind of talks about is learning and, you know, being a part of an organization and having people in the organization help you. And, you know, if your boat breaks down or something, you know, Joe Blow might work on a boat and he helps you. And that's what it's all about. And then you have that person right there, you know, he'll fish the bass cast and then they'll, they'll fish angler's choice or they might fish a couple cat events or something. But I mean, they're, you know, but they know who they're going to be fishing against each and every event. Now, that, that's my three three groups that I would, me personally, would categorize right there. And yeah, that's wraps the whole series up, if you ask me. And, and it's different people for each group. There mm -hmm. really is. I mean, there's a lot of guys that said they can't compete. They're not going to spend 250 on a tournament. That's that is something I want to know in 2024. And I'm trying to learn that from my audience, too, is, is how many people don't tournament fish and just fish um, mm. that, that make up the backbone of our industry that just they'll listen, <clears throat> but they're not going to go fish the BFL or something like that. They're going to go out to their home lake with their son and they're just going to go fish for fun. Um, yeah, they're out there. I just don't know how you can quantify that as your audience. Yeah, that's true. They're there, you know, and I think we put something together. I don't know if there's something I read about that as well as when are we going to get back to just fishing, you know, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, when, when are we going to get back to that point when it's not really, 
yeah, you want to win money. Money does help put gas in the car and the boat and the truck and SUV and whatever else you pull. But, you know, it's kind of, you know, there. So I really take this as many different ways, Thomas and I go a lot. You know, it's almost like being an intern. You know, I'm going to fish the. Let's say we fish the uh, the BFLs and we're co angler and we're learning. And, you know, we're willing to learn and be a part of an organization to move up through the different series. And we're taking the baby steps. And I kind of look at it that way as well. I mean, you know, you're donating money for your chance to learn to help you grow as an angler. And, you know, what if you, you know, you picked a guy that's been fishing Smith Mountain Lake for years and, you know, or a couple different lakes for years, done really, really well. And you say, hey, I'll pay all your entry fees for the whole year. You just take me fishing so I can learn from you. And, you know, that's the whole thing about getting back to learning the sport and, you know, learning the whole aspect of the sport itself. And, you know, that we, we talked about that a week ago about the high school and the college kids. And that's why they're so far ahead of us now than a lot of the older guys was because they fished through the college. They fished through the high school. They raised their own money. They fish with sometimes family and then they, they moved on. And now we have them in the uh, Bassmaster elites in 2024. I mean, some of the best anglers, young anglers that have ever, I, I preach this hundred percent. I believe that 2024, I believe Milligan, which a couple of us say is going to probably crush it from those young anglers, but we got a heck of a group coming on board in 2024. I want to look out at the young guys. I want to look at some of these Japanese anglers to see what they do in the industry. And then I, I, I still, I want to see how the ABA individual series does without a, a, a co-angler and to see if this really is going to be the transition and we start seeing the co-anglers dropping off on all of them. Um, I, I got a lot, I got, it, it was so weird. The, the biggest flack I got when I, when I made a video about that uh, two weeks ago was about the grassroots. People were not too upset about the BFL level, but they're like, well, does that mean I don't want to see that go away in my local club? Right. And that spoke that that really made me like reflect for a while. Yeah, your local, like, you know, mom and pop 10 boat club, they need the co-angler to get the get people hooked on it. Oh yeah. But BFL level, when you're when the prices keep going up where you might be paying, let's say in 10 years, five hundred bucks as a co-angler for a day, ah, do you really want to do that? Or just go get a kayak? And I think Ooh. that transition's coming. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about that with electronics and with the electronics getting so daggone good. I'm in the back of the boat. What am I, just the net man? I mean, you're picking the fish up before I get there. I mean, let's say you bought that brand new icon, you know, and you mortgaged your house. And then the guy that you get as your co angler, you know, drops spike it die. And then the next day you're driving back and you're like, you know what? I'll pay a little bit extra not to have a co-angler. And it's just, it's not about cheating. It's just that simple. You don't want to be an Uber for a random stranger. Um, I mean, Ooh. It, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not, I'm going to call it like that. Like, yeah, there's a lot of good co-anglers out there, but you know, in your heart, everyone that's listening, that's one of the things that is in your mind. It's like, I don't have to worry about backboating this guy with forward facing center. I don't have to worry about that stuff. And the prices are getting higher and it's going to break at some point. And I think ABA coming out with this series and I know the elite 70 did the same thing. Yep. If they do well, this is a litmus test. If it does well, it really is. we'll see what happens after this year. And cat did the same thing as well. Carolina English team tournament trail. I know they launched two yep. of them and I think they, they haven't announced the rest, but I've heard that there are more coming in 2024. Uh, this, like you said, uh, just the boater. So four trails now that are now announcing that for this year. So it's just, it went from zero basically to like three or four. So yes, yes. that's, you know, that's I, something to watch. Yeah. You know, at the Bass Cast, I can tell you guys, you know, I've never raised my price. I've raised a little bit. I think one time I went to 110, <clears throat> but I'll never go up on the price because I want it to be fishing. I want you to take your family. I want you to bring your kids. Uh, I have the schedule spread out pretty good. I got one in March. One in April, one in June, uh, one in October, two in October, one in October. I apologize. Two in November, and our championship in December. And you only have to fish three to qualify. 
because I know there's so much out there, so many other tournaments out there that uh, that's why I did the three and there is a $25 registration fee. But, you know, when I first started my series, I had so many fathers and sons fish it. And I'm not talking about <clears throat> Jeff and Clay Ross, you know, teens. I'm talking about, you know, kids fish my tournament series. And that was the coolest thing about it. And I, I like to see it come back. I mean, you know, it's it kind of died off a little bit. But I would like to see it come back more because we do have a great payout and it's 100% payback. And it's just a great day of fishing with your family. I think, what is it? <clears throat> Last year, I had two boys that fished together. They were under 16, so they, they couldn't drive the boat. But their dad drove the boat and they fish. Dad said he, you know, he, he didn't know how to fish. I mean, he just drove the boat. But, I mean, it was just great to have anglers like that. And now all those anglers have started moving up, and now they're fishing our league. I mean, you know, by themselves, you know, they can drive the boat. You made a great point there, and I want to hit on this because th this was talked about too. The dad's in the boat. Technically, if you were a jaded individual, you could say cheating could occur. At what point will tournament organizations just be like, listen, if you can afford a $50,000 boat, you have to have a GoPro running because that's what the pros do. Hmm. Do you think more organizations will start doing that ever? Just like, just leave a GoPro recording just to check how things are going down. No. Nope. I got a spot and I'm not going to tell you where my spot is and I got a pattern and I'm not going to tell you where my pattern is. And you know, I've, I've you know, it's, I ain't gonna say nothing else, but yeah, I, I never, <laughs> I never see that per to happen, but that's the one, you know, <clears throat> that's a cool thing that, you know, has been brought up by Dwayne at uh, attorney X moving into the bass boat part of it, doing a catch and release. Mm. when you when you catch a fish i know where you're at your geo actually you know we're all being tracked your phone i mean i can watch danielle go from lunch bird to here on my phone as long as she's got that one thing turned on i can watch the car just drive down the road and you know i i can tell you where you are i mean just like the kayak series we can tell you where you are or not telling people where we are but i mean that's how it works so i mean I know where you caught the fish, even though you don't want to tell your buddy. And that, I, yeah, and you know, that could be something where they have to sign in. And then we could go to that point, even if they, you know, even if it's a catch and release, you know, if it's a catch tournament, still bringing your five, you got to take a photo and upload it to Tourney X or do something crazy like that. And it would automatically call out for you and you bring your five back. That would be pretty cool. I'm so interested to see where the technology goes because you're going to start getting AI too to check for like tournament issues. I had Jake Harshman on who did the Bassmaster kayak trail in the Susquehanna and he had that issue where he, he literally caught the same bass the next day and he said like, I took a picture of it and they had to disqualify it. Like, you know, it knew that that was the same fish. And oh yeah, it, it, it's just amazing how this technology is advancing so freaking quick. Yeah, Tourney X has been doing that for a while now, and that's per that is pretty freaking cool regarding that. And you know, it it can tell you looking at the photos if it's the same fish, just by the you know the stripes and markings and all that good stuff. So I mean, yeah, you're right, dude. Uh... There there's so much technology, and it's all right here. I mean, this yeah. is it. I mean, this 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 phone right here probably I make more money on this phone. Than anything oh, yeah. else and it, it's crazy how I, I i had a bag phone if you guys want to know that's how old i am but <clears throat> yeah so i mean you know that it's you know there that would be a really cool I, I like that part of it that'd be really cool to have a tournament where you caught your five and you would have to take a photo and submitted your fish it's just interesting to know like he was a tournament director this is not sci-fi these are conversations in the next you know four five six seven years it's going to happen like to see where tournament fishing goes, because what we just talked about might sound like a little bit of fantasy, but it's coming. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, there's, and you know, it would be, that would be pretty cool because we will probably weed out a lot of cheaters. Oh God. Yeah. And I mean, if, if, if you caught the same, I mean, you know, we, we know where you're at shows us on the map. 
I mean, we got the whole map of Smith Mountain Lake on our phone. And, you know, when wherever you caught that fish, that's where it's at. And it'll, it'll automatically register and show us a photo of the fish before we even see it uh, come across the scales. Good stuff. That, that's freaking. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to have we're gonna have to have another whole conversation about that in a couple of years. Um, but when, it, awesome. when it comes when it comes to your tournaments, and, and you know, again, guys, as always, links in the episode description. Everything we talk about. How, is it take you like twenty four hours to come up with your schedule? Is it six months? Like, what is the process to the time you hit submit onto your website, like, and post the schedule? You mean putting it together? Yeah. <clears throat> so. Because we are the home of bass schedules, and I'm going to tell you guys this right now, I, I have a bunch of schedules on the website, and that's probably our number one or number two click on the website, the schedules, because everybody knows wants to know where to fish. And if your schedule is not on my website, that is your fault, not mine, because I get thousands, thousands. I can't even count the thousands of people that come looking for a schedule that want to fish. Even if you're a club, send us your schedule and we'll post it on the website. It's just media at thebasscast.com. But really, you know, we we, we kind of sit down and I wait for all the rest of the schedules, the BFLs to come in, and we kind of look at the events that we know we're going to cover. And we lay out a schedule. We know Angler's Choice. I've been covering that since day one. Uh, I try to get to as many Bass Nation Virginia events as possible. Uh, the BFLs on Smith Mount Lake, definitely kind of we hit those because they're in our backyard. Uh, and, you know, there's two of those each year. And, you know, so four, five, six, there's 10 weekends gone right there already and 52 weekends out of a year just out of those three tournament trails alone that we cover. So a lot of them are piggybacking this year, which is going to be fun. But, uh, you know, so we wait till that's done. And then we kind of just we put it all in a in a Google Doc sheet. And we kind of put the bass cast schedule together that way because we, we don't, you know, <clears throat> the schedule, the series was not created. It was actually created out of, um, I need content. You know, the first year of the basscast.com, I pay for everything. Anybody does that. I mean, heck, I ain't asking you to, for a handout or nothing, but it's understandable. <clears throat> the second year I got sponsors. We've been sponsored ever since. Um, and, uh, I knew that I needed content and I needed numbers at the end of the year. So, uh, another tournament series had folded that fish Smith Mount Lake. And so we just took a spot and, uh, we took the dates and we had a winter series and over the last six years, we made it into a spring slash winter. I mean, we have more events in the winter than spring, but we, you know, we knew guys like fishing a lot more like fish in spring. And, you know, then we threw in. Enough that if you fish the two in the spring, come back and fish one in November, October, it's still pretty daggone nice. And then just bundle up for December. I mean, that's just the way it goes. But so it, it takes about an hour or so to put together a schedule. So it's not not that time consuming. It's mainly the time consuming of it takes about an hour to put a schedule onto a website because the way the calendar is set up, it's done. Each event is done by day. So you, when you go to thebasscast.com, it's just like looking at your daily calendar or your weekly calendar, and that's how this is done. So each one of these are put in individual posts is what I, we call them on the web part of it. And so it takes about an hour to put a schedule on thebasscast.com. I mean, it takes a while, but I know this is what you guys want. I don't, And this was with any tournament director I've had on this show. You're the first ones to get bitched at and no one shakes your hand for the amount of work behind the scenes to get all this stuff <clears> to go. And and everyone can have their 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 gripes with a tournament director, but you got to appreciate the work that they're putting into this. Yeah, we don't want to fall down that rabbit hole. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Danielle read a, um, she was in a forum for uh, kayak fishing and um, she lasted pretty much how long it lasts. Average kayak tournament, the average kayak tournament director last about three years they either want to go back fishing which i understand at 110 percent or they just had enough and you know chris lucas retired two years ago yeah two yeah this would be one year ago because i'm we're almost in 2024 guys you guys believe that and that were days away and he retired and he was like the one of the longest running tournament directors and it was like 10 or 11 years 
And that's unheard of because there is so much that goes into this thing, so much organization that goes in this thing. Um, <clears throat> and like, like I said, you know, the MPFL, Thomas, we talked about that earlier. You know, for five to six people to run an organization like the NPFL, and with them, I think it's one, three, four, about five people as well that run English Choice from people that take your money to register your boats, to put everything in a computer each way in, to write out all the checks, to weigh the fish, um, announcer. I mean, it's it's a whole lot that goes into a tournament series that I, you know, I don't want to say you should be more grateful, but I think you should. You, you really should. should. I mean, you know, it's, it's like all, it's like the griping we've heard about from Bass. Bass built you a platform. They went out and got all these sponsors. They got all this television for you to put on a Jersey that's worn maybe by the basscast.com or maybe by fish and DMV for you to promote that brand if you suck that's your fault sorry people gonna suck i mean you know gary v yeah. says you know sometimes you all can't be the best and sometimes you suck and but they built a platform for you to promote you the brand and your skills and if you at the end of the day if you suck you go home uh 100 and just humility it's a social media age i mean you know, I mean, this is, as you guys are listening to this, this is free content. I don't make any money off this and there'll be people complaining about it, but it's like, it's free, but people still, that's, that's the human condition. I think, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, I could dive into money here or nothing like that, but guys, the podcast doesn't even pay for itself. It does not, it has never made enough money to pay for itself. I, have, I mean, never. Period. I just love doing it. I mean, I love talking to people. Yeah, it, it really is. The p- people are the most interesting part, I and mean, that's the only reason you know you can stand behind a mic as at least as long as I've I've done in the last year. Um, I mean, we've covered so much. Have we have we missed anything when it comes to your the tournaments that you have coming up? Dude, no, man. I mean, we're excited, ready for twenty twenty four. Excited, for, like I said, excited for the expos. I just love going to expos. I mean, it's so cool because I get to see so many yeah. people shake so many hands and uh you know we're just ready to get back out there i mean people say you get a break i don't know what break you guys are talking about but we get a break yeah maybe a week maybe two we get a longer break in the summertime than we do in the winter time that is true now that i'm in the industry like this it is such a fast ramp to go from january to april it's insane with how many expos and, and things that you get to be a part of leading up to the fishing season i forgot one expo real quick guys i forgot a augusta county bass that's in february up here in fishersville virginia i mean it's they're moving to the big building this year they're gonna have a lot of people there a lot of booths uh they're still looking for booths so i mean you know augusta county bass is who that is and I'll be there in February. So, I mean, and then March, the season starts. It's coming fast. It really is. Brian, you know, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, Guys, as always, link in the episode description to everything that we talked about. So you can go check out all of his tournament series or read some of his, some of these articles that he's coming out on some of these hot button issues. Um, As always, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.